Okay, so I want to um, talk about white collar boxing today. And this is a slightly unusual video for me in that it's directly from personal experience rather than just opinions. Um, I had my white collar boxing match last night um, and it was an experience, let's put it that way. What I'm going to do in this video is break it up into my own experience of not just the fight itself but leading up to it and how you get involved and so on. Then maybe uh, I'll talk a little bit about the difference between this and professional boxing. Of course there's a, there's a world of difference. But first of all, um, I've been a boxing fan for years and I've always wanted to act on this but it's quite difficult to get connections unless you're quite young and you're really you're molded into the sport. Now what I mean by that is if you're from a boxing family or you're you know you're going to gyms, boxing gyms since you were a kid I think it's much much easier to get connections to get amateur bouts. Now what I was doing, I started at 28, I'm 29 now going to a gym and whilst the guys gave me good training it, I just didn't feel it was leading anywhere and that's not in, that's not to slander them, they were good trainers but I just felt I was impatient, I felt it had to lead somewhere and I felt it was doing it more for exercise than uh, actually getting about so I felt a little bit disillusioned then I came across white, the white collar scene and basically um, I know the British Boxing Board of Control and um, other amateur well not amateur but other boxing associations don't necessarily agree with white collar boxing and I'll explain that afterwards but basically um, it began in the mid 80's uh, two professionals in New York City I believe it was a doctor and a solicitor but might not be quite that different jobs anyway um, decided they were both boxing enthusiasts and they would start off this new concept the idea is giving people who are interested in boxing an opportunity to do it that they wouldn't necessarily have otherwise because it's a relatively short period of training time now even amateur boxers um, active amateur boxers uh, train hard and they, they get active bouts and it is a big part of their life professional boxers of course it is their life it's, their, it's as Carl Froch says it isn't just a passion it's actually um, an income it's, it's you know getting your children into school and so on, that sort of thing. So that's a very different thing. But um, what they wanted to do was give a concept uh, to White Collar Box. I believe it began in Gleason's gym in New York City. And Fight Club, the film incidentally, was partially inspired by this idea. But it's, it sprang up all over the Western world. Uh, it's huge in Britain, pretty big in the States as well. Um, it has a slightly uh, dark image, I have to say. But what I want to really emphasize is uh, if you sort of have this mindset that white collar boxing is like you know bare knuckle gypsies or something it's really it's not like that sort of thing at all it is very professional the, the guys who train you are professional anyway um, I contacted the website ultra white collar boxing there's a few different associations that's the one I got involved with and um, what they do is basically they um, get in touch they give you a text message and tell you to come to a meeting at a meeting they run through what is involved. Um, I'll tell you a bit of that because um, I didn't know all the details before I joined up and there are some things I think you would need to know if you're interested. Firstly it's open to men and women so um, obviously it's male dominated but if you're a woman and you're interested don't be put off because um, everyone's welcome. As long as you're uh, past the medicals, as long as you're over 18 then everyone's welcome. Um, what else can I say? Uh, a big part of the UWCB, I don't know about the other events, but UWCB has a big emphasis on charity um, and it's based specifically raising money for Cancer Research UK. So what they'll do is you, they'll give you a lot of paperwork um, and they'll give you information about reaching targets. Don't worry too much about that because it isn't actually as strict as what they imply. It's more just to give you a bit of motivation. So I was thinking, oh, how am I? For example, you have to sell tickets, and they said a minimum of 20 tickets. Now, I did not sell 20 tickets, and I still got the fight. So don't worry about that. It's just because, obviously, they, they need to make profit as well, and on the other hand, they also need to make money for the charity. So it's just to motivate you, basically. 
um, because they, they what they do is they give you free training. It's twice a week. It's um, it's very useful training. They go through everything that you will need to know. There's sparring, which is very important. So it's not just hitting bags. You actually get sparring. Um, and in, in that gym, they go also go through a lot of the philosophy um, and the psychology of what you're going to experience. Um, fight day itself, I got to the Stadium of Light in Sunderland. I'm sure someone will upload a video at some point. Um, and that basically involved uh, the referee giving us some rules. There was a lot of waiting around, but not too much. Hand wrapping, that takes a long time. You need someone else to do it. Getting into your kits. Um, basically preparing yourself psychologically. Uh, sparring in initially before your own fight. Um, filling in some more paperwork. But basically... What I would say is, um, anyway, I'll get to the fight itself. So luckily I was third up. I was sort of the first fight among the guys. And, um, well, it didn't go my way. I lost the fight. I'll just say that from the outset. What happened was um, I took my corner's advice, and uh, it was good advice, but it was to give the guy a, a right hook to basically stun him and get him off balance. But... Unfortunately, I think his corner had the same idea, and he came straight in with with a right hook, so it was a clash. And um, he overwhelmed me basically. I think he was pretty fast, a lot faster than I'd seen him in sparring, and he overwhelmed me. Um, that meant that I let my guard down, and um, he genuinely didn't hurt me. Genuinely, he just overwhelmed me, so I I tired out basically. Um, and I think he'd be taking the sparring lighter just before the fight than I had whereas I'd really been so I'd actually tired myself out and um, there was a few distractions I mean when you have the gum shield in it takes some time getting used to a gum shield I have to say because you have to focus on breathing through your nose it's not that easy um, it's actually quite difficult to breathe in a boxing match sometimes um, so the guys were saying take it easy and that was going to be my strategy, but you can't take it easy if your opponent's coming in there like a bull, because you have to counter that. And that's what he was doing. He was fast. He wasn't a particularly hard hitter. I genuinely, I was more hurt in sparring than I was in the fight. But he overwhelmed me. And at one point he got me in a corner, and uh, the, the ref was yelling at him to get off because the bell had rung. And uh, I don't think he heard. I don't think that was his fault, because we have to wear headgear, and it's a real nuisance. We have to do it for safety at this level, but... So basically, I know there was a few points a ref called me over and, you know, you're trying to focus and it's hard to hear what he's saying, but I knew what he was saying, get your defence up. Um, so in the second round, about halfway through, it was stopped. Now that was disappointing, would have liked it to go three rounds and obviously I didn't go in there to lose, but at this level, I'm not going to beat myself up over it. My number one priority was getting the experience and I know... I know in my heart that most people will never in their life enter a boxing ring. Okay, it's just amateur level, but it's still a boxing match. People can get injured. I mean, a guy had to be taken to A&E last night, so the risks are real. This is not child's play. People get hurt. Um, but being in that ring, I tell you, it's an incredible atmosphere. It's a little bit surreal. You know, I've watched countless boxing videos, and I always wondered what is the psychology of those guys. So to be in there myself, you're sitting in the little stool, the guys are giving you advice, you see the referee there, you see the opponent in the other corner, you see the round girl walking around, you know the audience is there. It's it's a very surreal atmosphere. Um, at the end of the fight, we, we shook hands, and um, that was that. I'm pleased I'd done it. I'm disappointed that I lost the fight, but in a boxing match one guy wins one guy doesn't that's just the way it goes um, but I am pleased I've done it and I think in my life it will go down as a, a good experience um, whether I continue or not I have to think about so now just a little bit about uh, oh by the way another thing about it, it it is good for your social life you actually do make new friends I've I've got to know a few of the guys I was with um, and it's just so you know how it works, it's three two minute rounds. Now a word of caution, that doesn't sound like much. You figure oh six minutes, that's nothing. But in a real fight, each of those two minutes feels like twenty minutes, believe me. 
it feels a hell of a lot longer. Even if you shadow box and time yourself, it feels a lot longer than what the time actually is. So in the real thing, it really feels like it's an eternity. So what I want to say is, uh, if you want to get into this, it's certainly something I'd recommend, but you need to... If I could give some advice from my experience, it's try not to tire yourself out just before the fight. Um, and be aware that breathing is very important. And of course everyone's going to have different skills and different experience and different corners are going to say different things. But one thing, I, I, in my opinion, whilst all the advice is good, there is a fundamental difference from this sort of boxing um, professional or even amateur level uh, other types of amateur boxing in the sense that most of the people doing this will only do it once in their life so we have a hell of a lot at stake in those six minutes so I think there's a greater intensity um, everyone was going in there like bulls and just um, there was no one laying back everyone was going in and just I watch a few of the other fights so in that sense it is a lot more intense now I'm not of course professional level is a lot harder and you know it's much much longer uh, but that is one difference because you see professional guys they measure each other up they're, they're relaxed they, it's a very different thing and um, there's some other things that are different in, uh, in this level because it's classed as amateur boxing you have to wear headgear you're also wearing a shirt rather than bare chested one reason for that is just so the, the company can show themselves off um, like a promotional thing what else can I say um, in every other sense so they have everything that you would expect in a boxing match that you wouldn't necessarily get at amateur level you have a big crowd uh, you have a round girl you have um, judges you get a little souvenir at the end it really does feel like a boxing match and well it is a boxing match but the point I'm making is one big benefit of the white collar event is you get a lot more attention in that event than you might if you're an amateur. Um, I'll be honest, having to sell tickets is a little bit stressful. Um, even though the targets are not as strict as they sound, it's still a little bit stressful. And that's not a criticism of the organization. I mean, I'm sure that that's just the way they do it. And in an amateur fight, anyway, in, a, in another sort of amateur fight, I'd still want to encourage people to buy the tickets. But does add a little bit of pressure trying to raise money for the charity and trying to do that. If anyone's interested in this and you want some advice about getting involved, just inbox me below. Um, I'll be happy to share my experience to give you some tips. If you're someone who's into boxing thinks, should I do this or not, I would say give it a go. In terms of safety, okay, there are risks involved, but there are doctors there. You're in safe hands in that sense. And the referee was a really professional referee. I, I, I don't dispute his. Although I'm disappointed, I, I you know he was doing his job so I have no grievance with that what this experience has done is um, given me confidence that now I've done it I have done it okay it's not professional fight it's not like that but it's still a boxing match and I've done it and most people in the life will not have that experience um, but it gives me all the more respect for professional guys who really devote their life to this. And okay, they're not put in the deep end. They do have a lifetime of preparation, so they're not like they're not supermen. They're not like when you think, okay, these guys go through three rounds and look how shattered they are. How can professionals do that? You have to remember, they're they're experts at training. They're dietitians. They're this is their life. It's their livelihood. Just like as a teacher, I would prepare a lesson and so on. In white collar boxing, you get a lot of advice and you try to follow it, but the truth is, in that ring, you just go for it. I'm not saying you don't necessarily remember advice I was trying to, but it's it's not easy. It's like a constant barrage, and that is so tiring. I mean, I was thinking, God, when is this round going to end? I mean, I got a few good shots in, and there was one point I know the referee was speaking to him, which meant that I'd, I'd also... Um, got a good shot on him because the referee has to check if people are okay so that's what I'd say basically if you're considering this feel free to ask me questions I've I've done it I've been through the experience um, obviously everyone's going to have different skills uh, but one thing everyone has in common is just starting off they're quite strict actually about people who have had fight experience the absolute limit they will have is someone who's had two or three amateur bouts 
they'll not let professionals do this for obvious reasons and even amateurs who have had a lot of experience so if you are an amateur and you've had a few fights they might be funny about that because the concept is for beginners um, let me know if you have any questions just put the questions below and I'll try and answer as best I can thank you